So let's talk about how you identify the theoretical foundations for your study. This can be tricky or a little bit difficult for some people, um, but hopefully this will help give you an idea of how to approach it. And I'm going to show you some examples um, so that you can get a sense for how the theoretical foundations are tied to your study. So what exactly is a theoretical foundation? This is the foundations are tied specifically to the variables in your study or the phenomenon that you are attempting to study. They are foundational for developing your research questions and your hypotheses, and they're key for identifying the instruments that you'll use for data collection or building out your uh, interview questions or focus group questions. So think of it this way. The problem space addresses what the researcher will study and the theoretical foundation speaks to how the study approaches the research problem, okay? The theoretical foundation explains the way the researcher shapes the study the way that they have described it, okay? One thing I do want to note here is um, sometimes in dissertations you'll hear the writer talk about a conceptual framework, um, and you'll see that in for Grand Canyon University students, you'll see that a lot referenced before they changed the template in 2020. You'll see a lot of um, writers talk about the conceptual, conceptual framework. That's broader than the theoretical foundation. And what's done is um, they compare and contrast different models to explain why they chose the theoretical foundation for their study. For your study, you just have to describe what the theoretical foundations are, okay? And again, it's tied to the variables in, their, in your study. So how do you choose your theoretical foundation? These steps here are defined in the template, the dissertation template at Grand Canyon University. Um, so you can go into the template and get a lot more information. I just wanted to summarize it here. So as you're reading, in the literature, you'll start to identify theories, models, concepts that you are interested in. So for me, I started out actually reading research on communication because I thought that was interesting. And it took me down a path and led me to the concept of psychological capital, which then led me to the concept of how psychological capital and work engagement are related. And so I landed on wanting to study more about psychological capital and work engagement which then became my theoretical frameworks. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Then you will take those theories or models and you will connect them to your problem statement. And I'll show you some examples in a minute on um, what that looks like. Then once you have your problem statement developed, then your research questions and your hypotheses can be built based on that problem statement and that theory, okay? So your theoretical foundation is tied to the variables or the phenomenon and you need it to build out your problem statement and your research questions and you will also need it to help identify valid instruments or questions that you can use to collect your data so let's look at some examples i have five examples here so i'll try and go through them quickly but i want you to see a couple of different ways that you can approach it so this is my study uh, my problem statement looking at the difference in overall work engagement of instructional designers working at home working in the office and the moderating effect of psychological capital. There were two theoretical frameworks, work engagement theory and psychological capital theory, okay? Supporting overall work engagement and the overall psychological capital. There were two reliable and valid instruments that I used to collect the data on work engagement and psychological capital theory. And that's what I use to build my research questions, to collect my data, and to analyze the results. Okay, let's look at a different example from a qualitative perspective. So this is Nandi, 2019. Problem statement is, it is not known how probation officers in Colorado describe the unique job demands, resources, and engagement in the workplace. So I wanted to use this example because it's very similar to mine. They're looking at work engagement in the workplace but the theoretical framework that Nandi used is the job demands and resources model. And this model talks about how when your job demands go up, if you don't have the personal resources to address those job demands and help you manage 
the resources, then your engagement will go down. So it's the, it's the I'm going to call it supply and demand of the resources that you have psychologically and internally to address those job demands and that stress to prevent you from burning out and remaining engaged. So that's how Nandi used her uh, theoretical framework. And then she also used self-determination, which is used in a lot of studies on work engagement as well. Okay. Let's look at another example. So Dr. Hazy in, in 2019, his problem statement was, it's not known if there's a significant difference in grit and or resilience scores. There's a, uh, uh, a hint for you between first year and dissertation phases of non-traditional doctoral students. What are his theoretical frameworks? Grit theory, resilience theory, because he talks about grit and resilience scores. So in quantitative studies, your variables and the theory behind those variables are your theoretical frameworks. He also includes Tinto's theory of student retention because he's talking about grit and resilience in the retention of doctoral students in his study. So that's his um, more of his conceptual framework, but the reason why he designed his problem statement and his research questions the way that he did. Okay, now I'm going to show you another qualitative example that is a similar study where they're looking at resilience. So let's look at Sandoval 2018. Hers was a qualitative study. It is not known how non-traditional online doctoral graduates perceive resilience as having contributed to their online doctoral degree completion. Okay, so she uses two theories of resilience here, and then she also uses Tinto's model of student retention as part of her uh, theoretical framework for her study. Okay, so she's talking about resilience that's the underlying theoretical foundation for her study. And then Tinto's model of student retention is part of the broader conceptual framework to support her study. Okay. And let's look at one more. This is Schneider 2020. It's not known if and to what extent a predictive relationship exists between a subordinate's perceptions of his or her leader's leadership style and employee engagement as moderated by organizational change readiness in a retail work environment. There are three variables in this statement for the quantitative study. It's leadership style, employee engagement, and then there's a moderator, which is organizational change readiness. And you can see that she maps those to three theoretical frameworks, transformational leadership theory, Kahn's theory of engagement, and uh, Weiner's organizational readiness for change theory. Okay, so each variable for a quantitative study will have a theoretical foundation. And for a qualitative study, each phenomenon that is to be studied will have a theoretical foundation. Okay, I hope this is helpful for you. Uh, if not, feel free to comment, email me with any questions. Good luck with your dissertation, and I will see you next time.